gentlemen, Colombia have a more severe punishment for drug traffic than for torture or rape. More severe punishment for drug traffic than torture or rape. This has to be something, there has to be something wrong with my society. And the point of this is that the war on drugs changed society and the war on drugs changed society values. The, as a member of INCIDE, the Center for Inclusion, Democracy and Human Rights, an NGO that, that currently works in Colombia, we hardly encourage the government on Colombia to legalize marijuana. And for this issue, I will uh, barely resume what is the problem and the solution we're proposing, and I will provide you two main arguments to adopt this, this legalization. Firstly, because this will give a huge supply, uh, support to the end of the armed conflict, and secondly, because this will dismiss a lot of economically inefficient costs of the, of the war on drugs. So, uh, before the problem, you must know what is the status quo in Colombia for marijuana. Marijuana is prohibited, but decriminalize. It means that uh, the government doesn't allow people to do it except on a minimal dose that it, get, it has to be used for personal consumption. So what is the problem when we have already decriminalized a uh, minimal dose of different drugs? The problem is that, first of all, this criminal law is paradoxical and, as I mentioned at the beginning of my speech, very disproportionate. The second thing is that the illicit profit fuels the armed conflict. And another new thing on this problematic is that Colombia is now starting to be a consumer country, not only a producer country, but it is starting to consume their own drugs inside the country. But in, in all of these tipping points we are already like handling in Colombia, we find a huge opportunity to make a change toward legalization of marijuana that has to do with the uh, peace process going on with the most, uh, with the biggest armored group in Colombia, the Las Farc. So what is the solution that we propose? We propose a government regulated market of marijuana. This means that marijuana it's, will be allowed for the consumption, distribution and production and for both medical and uh, recreative uses of it. And how is this going to happen? This is going to happen by an expropriation of current crops of cannabis. Uh, the government will obviously provide like a, a, enough compensation, economical compensation for those uh, crops of marijuana, or will also give the person the option to replace the crop into a, a legal one or a different than marijuana. And the, basically the state is going to assume the monopoly of the production, distribution and sellings of marijuana. One important thing of this policy is that it needs to be uh, made in a way that allows a transitional period in order to fix some of the things that has to be done and to, in order to improve a policy. I mean, no policy born perfectly on the early beginning and we already know that, so we have to allow policies to get fixes on the way. Um, the other thing is that I know you are thinking that marijuana legalization is not going to solve Colombia's problem. Colombia's, uh, one of the biggest problems in Colombia is cocaine exportation or other drug exportation. And taking this into account and, and knowing your concern, I still believe that Colombia should adopt this policy for the main two arguments I firstly pointed. The first thing is that the, the, the legalization of marijuana will have a significant and a strong contribution to the end of the armed conflict. How is this going to be like? The, the, the problem, actually, the current problem of the armed conflict in Colombia is that it's inserted on a vicious circle. This vicious circle is derivated because the, it's a long-term, fully funded war. It means that these armed groups have been being funded of, of illicit profits being seen so many times ago, and they will continue being funded out of these things, even though they signed the peace. And this vicious circle uh, basically consists in that even though they sign peace agreements, they, they will transfer the business to new criminal networks or criminal bands. And it's it obeyed to a like, 
it leads to a very reasonable thing, and it is that illicit markets are always defended by weapons. There's no other way that you can defend an illicit market as it is. An example or a really good evidence for this is that after paramilitaries group demobilized in 2006 in Colombia, the criminal bands inherited that business and it, con it, it allows to them to continue to have in that monopoly of that illicit business and the problem of this is that they continue making huge violations of human rights such as, as, as this internal displaced. Colombia is a country with over 6 million internally displaced people and a part of these 6 million was not for the armed groups but for these inherited bands or criminal networks that has the control or the monopoly. My second argument is that um, the Colombian war on drugs led inefficient coast. Uh, when I'm saying inefficient, it is that it didn't achieve, achieve the goal that they were made for. In the first place, because they, it, the demand on drugs is an inelastic demand, and on the second place, on the other side, the supply side on Colombia has a very specific um, characterization, that is that socioeconomic conditions of people of Colombia maintains them on the supply side because it is so profitable that no matter how many people die, no matter how hard the punishment are, there will always be someone on that supply chain. So it's like binded on the both ways. It's binding on the both ways. But the most inefficient thing of all is that we are figuring this out after so many years of this. After having 14% of our populations on overcrowded jails, uh, contributing to a human rights crisis on the jails, and making this like it were new, when it is not new. So what I beg to you is like to think about this as a different approach to legalization of marijuana in Colombia. Thank you so much.